Welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday of Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For me, the, old, the first lesson and the gospel lesson have ties together. So I begin with sharing with you a reading from the first lesson, Amos chapter 7. This is what the Lord showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand, and the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And he said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos had said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amos was told by Amaziah, Go, seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to Mark, in the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said it is Elijah, and others it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to marry your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he listened to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and all the guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me a, at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Carpenters and contractors and builders use tools like a plumb bob or a level to build anything from a small table to a large building, making sure that things are true and straight and level and measure up. When things are not level and foundations are not true, it brings about catastrophes, something like the building collapse in Surfside, Florida. The plumb bob is an ancient tool believed to be invented by the Egyptians to, to determine the accuracy of a building. And for probably just as long as the invention of a plumb bob, this ancient tool, human beings have been judging each other and, measure, and whether they measure up to other people's expectations chastising those who they believe don't measure up. Amos introduces the idea of a plumb line and measuring up in today's Old Testament lesson. And then we see the results of it again in the Gospel lesson and the telling of the account of the death of John the Baptist in Mark. Both of them announce God's plumb line seeking justice in the world. Jesus has ended his uh, kingdom tour of Judea, teaching about seeds, healing those in need and calming the seas, all the time teaching and preaching and making folks wonder who he is. In the weeks to come, Jesus will invite the disciples to come away with him and rest for a while. He will feed the 5,000 and then openly ask, who do people say that I am? We even hear it in today's gospel lesson as, as the king and others argue about who Jesus is. Today is marked by the prophetic work of Amos against King Jeroboam, who had not been faithful to God and led his people away along with the priest Amaziah. And John the Baptist, who takes on King Herod, who is taken up with his brother's wife, and they both discover that speaking justice to power is important, but dangerous. John is murdered as an act of vengeance, and Amos is banished from prophesying in the land. The kingdom of God that Jesus brings is about justice. There is injust injustice when those in power, kings like Herod and Jeroboam, use their power to judge others and use their plumb line against others and don't use it on themselves. The history of the world is a history of those in power trying to judge others to make themselves look good. When they ignore God's justice, it is most often their downfall. Now in the Gospel of Mark, the account of Jesus' mission steps up. Now the powers of the world struggle against God's kingdom, and it's not with the spirits or illness or wind or sea or seeds. It is kings and powers. It is Jesus' message of grace and justice and care for all coming headlong into the collision with money, plow, power, and influence of the world. Now Mark has saved this story from when it actually happened to a place where it fits exactly in the spot leading to chapter 8 and a public confession of who Jesus is and what his presence on earth and the bringing about of God's kingdom will mean. God's justice is all about how Jesus will bridge the gap between humankind and God and what God has brought about the world. The world. The world has a plumb line, a measure, but it's not God's plumb line. The world often says you're too fat, too short, not smart enough, not pretty enough, don't have the right skin color, come from the wrong neighborhood, don't make enough money, and a host of other things that the world judges us by. The world is always telling us we don't measure up. You're not good enough, and you know how it goes. The messages play over and over again in our heads. We hear it all the time. 
A key part of Jesus' ministry is to seek out those who have been judged by powers and authorities and others and even religion. Jesus cures the man in Gerizza who is judged to have had a demon and so is not welcome in community. He heals a foreign woman and goes to places where those who are wounded by the judgment of others gather like the woman at the well in Samaria at noon. He goes to assure them that they do belong, that they do have a place, that they are accepted in God's kingdom. Because it's not about us measuring up, it's about Jesus measuring up. Now, of course, these lessons don't give us permission to judge one another. It is God's plumb line, judging the injustice of humanity. God has made us in God's own image. It's not about measuring up. We know we don't measure up. We know it ourselves all the time. It's about Jesus measuring up. We are made in the image of God. Amos' response to Amaziah the priest is that I'm only a herdsman and dresser of trees. These words of justice come from God, not me. John the Baptist is only telling the truth about what he observes, and, a plum, and King Herod is holding a plumb line to himself and does not like what he sees. Our world is overrun with folks who keep trying to measure us and tell us how to live and be. The kingdom Jesus is bringing is telling us that we are a child of God, redeemed and made a part of God's kingdom through baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus, who does measure up. What are your experiences in life where people have judged you? Recall the times when others have put a plumb line up to your life and told you straight out that by your actions and uh, by their actions and insults you don't measure up. In school, at work, in community, in family, at church. What are the messages that play over and over again in your head of the cruel things people have said about your life? that have lowered your self-esteem and self-confidence, or even brought you to tears, the injustices that have been plagued against you. We come to a point in the sermon often as we write, as I write the sermon that, that I know what the text is saying, but I look at, now what? We know that people can be cruel and unjust. We know that people can be judgmental and people are always ready with their plumb line to judge other people. And we know that God is gracious. So now what do we do? Well, it's important to look back at the text. What does Mark tell us when we think, now what? The text ends by telling us that the disciples did the right thing. The disciples did justice to John, took his body, and gave it a proper burial. And then, hedging on next week's gospel text, Jesus says, Come away with me to a deserted place and rest for a while. When we are overwhelmed by the injustices of the world, when the self-defeating messages keep playing in our heads, when we're tired of being gracious in the face of evil and judgment, Jesus says, come away with me and rest for a while. You are not invincible, but you are not alone. Jesus says, it's my fight too. For this, I died. Rest and be quiet, for the fight of injustice is a long one. And there are so many more who need to hear that they are loved and accepted by God. Come away and rest for a while, because you need to hear it too again and again. You are loved by God. You are made in God's image. I cannot say it better than one of my favorite Bible verses from Isaiah chapter 43. Do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. 
When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Keep working against the world's plumb line. Pay attention to God's plumb line, working for justice for all. And don't forget to rest. Rest for a while, because the journey is long and the work needs to be done. Amen.